Hey, 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 good morning, AGC Online. How are you doing? We are so excited for you to join us during our broadcast service. Hey, really quickly, down below in the comments, uh, leave a high five, maybe a fist bump. Say hello to somebody in the comments that's jumping in right now. Also, really quickly, put your favorite dessert in the comments. What's your favorite dessert? And also take this opportunity right now to host a watch party. Invite a friend into the comment section. Put their name. Let them know that church is going on right now. We're so excited. We're still been practicing and we are ready to worship the Lord this morning. If you're ready to worship, put some praise hands. Say amen. Come on, let's do it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name forever, God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it together. Lift up your gates, be lifted up. Lift up your gates, be lifted up. And let the King of glory come. Lift up your heads, you ancient doors. Lift up a shout unto the Lord. Oh, to be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Are you ready to worship the Lord a little bit more? Come on, let's give the Lord a little shout of praise here. Blessed be the Lord. Let's raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. I raise a hallelujah. Sing it. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a I raise a hallelujah 
going to sing. I'm going to sing in the middle of a storm. Sing it out. and worship the Lord. Worthy is the God of all gods. Come on. Sing a little louder. 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 Let's sing that bridge again. Come on. Sing a little louder in the presence. Hallelujah, right there in your living room. Come on, give God some praise. Good morning, and welcome to AGC Online. It's Sunday, April 5th, and these are your announcements. If you're new to AGC and you haven't already connected with us, be sure to follow our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Abundant Grace LHC. If you're looking for ways to serve at AGC during this time, you can contact the church office at 
1-800-242-3689. AGC would like to offer you the free resource of Right Now Media. You can sign up today by texting right now AGCH to 41411 or visit our website www.abundantgracelhc.org to sign up by clicking the link on our homepage. Join us for our midweek worship service every Wednesday at 6.30 on Facebook and YouTube Live. Be sure to like and share or host a watch party to get the word out to our AGC family. For more details on anything you heard, send us a message or call the church office at 928-855-3689. Thanks again for joining us. And if no one's told you today, you're awesome. Hey, Abundant Grace Online family. It is Palm Sunday, everybody. Show me your palms. Oh, wrong oh, palm, huh? Palm Sunday. Were they waving palms? Hey, oh. <laughs> yeah, a different kind of palm, right? Uh -huh. It's Palm Sunday, and we're going to have some fun today. And, uh, and so we want to welcome each one to our service today. Maybe this is your first time tuning in online. We want to say welcome. We're so glad to have you a part of the online family. And uh, God's just been doing some cool things. Uh, we've, we've been having more views on doing this online than we would a normal service. Mm -hmm. So join, have somebody share it and have somebody join in with you. You know, this is a great opportunity to share our services with your friends and family, cross country even. That's right. Have watch parties. We have family watching right now that are on the other part of the country. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. good to have everybody here with us. And so God's doing great things and uh, we're just excited to be able to have you with us today. Yes. So, yes. yeah. So what, what you got something that, Oh you've been man, about? how many of you are feeling a little bit, maybe lonely, isolated, um, maybe going a little stir crazy or, Cabin even, fever. or even bored. Okay. I know like keeping those kiddos busy during this time. That's, that's a, ch that's a challenge. Yeah, so keeping your bored. spouse busy. <laughs> But, you know, that term social distancing, I'm thinking may not be totally accurate. We received a message from Pastor Land this week, and it was encouraging, and he was sharing that he had heard that maybe a more accurate term for that would be the um, physical distancing instead of uh, social distancing. That's, that's, that is a good point. Because, you know, we are very social people. God created us that way, mm -hmm. and, you know, he even created Eve so Adam wasn't alone. Um, we see that in scripture. It's not good for, for us to be alone. We need each other. We're socializing right now, yes. even through through this. So yeah, yeah, socializing, it is very important. During this time, many people are hurting and mm -hmm. are scared or afraid or confused or maybe even discouraged. So I want to challenge you just to um, make sure you're reaching out, you know, that you're not becoming... Um, emotionally or relationally isolated in this time um, because it's important that we reach out to others and if you're you know if somebody's comes to mind um, their face comes to your mind or uh, their name we've been encouraging you know everybody to reach out to them and call them shoot them a text if you're thinking about them that mo often is the holy spirit leading you to reach out and connect with that person so um get, give that person a call shoot them a text and we're so blessed to have technology nowadays uh, through even this isolated time that we can still connect with people we can call we can text we can facetime we can even do service online so mm -hmm. please do your part to and don't leave it up to somebody else to um, to think oh they'll take care of it or they'll call them you know we are better together that was our theme a few years back and it's it's a great theme even though we're not together physically we are better together even through through this time e Ecclesiastes 4 talks about that two are better than one and if one falls the other one can lift the other one up but whoa whoa to to the one that is left alone and falls and there's no one there to lift him up so and then that verse in that passage it continues to read that three is even better than that a cord three 
fold cord is not quickly broken. So um, let's stick together during this time, even though it looks a little different than what we're used to, but continue to encourage, uplift, uh, reach out to one another, pray for one another, and you know what, we're gonna get through this. Yeah, we're, we are. In fact, there's a, there's a big group of pastors uh, across the nation, they're coming together and they formed this thing called Unite 714. Uh, pastors like uh, Pastor Robert Morris mm -hmm. and Pastor Steve Furtick, Chris Hodges, just uh, a number of pastors are doing this thing. And what this is, Unite 714, is they're getting churches and people all over America at 714 a.m., 714 p.m. to be praying uh, from Second Chronicles 714, hmm. which we know that verse, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and mm -hmm. seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear uh, from heaven and forgive them their sins and heal their yes. land. And so I just want to encourage you at 714 a.m., 714 p.m., let's just take time just to lift up our country and just pray that God will mm -hmm. heal our land because mm -hmm. He's got incredible things uh, left to do. And mm -hmm. so, uh, again, we're just excited to have you a part of this service with us. Let's continue to worship Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Abundant Grace Church. How's my family out there? Listen, things are a little crazy right now, I know, but it's just different. And different is okay. So we are having church via electronic waves. Can you feel the Holy Spirit? You can. I know you can. Because God lives in our heart. And we can worship through the electronic waves. We could do any of that. And right now, we're going to receive our blessing towards God with our finances. Um, there are a few ways you could give. You could give online. You could give via mail. You know, snail mail, they call that. You could come by the church and drop it off at the drop box. And, uh, and the church will pick that up and receive it. But right now, I just wanted to share with you how God is moving. You know, God says, count it all joy when we go through trials and tribulations. And right now, you could look at this situation that we're going through as fearful, or you could look at it as God's making some changes and he's in total control. And listen, I believe he's in total control. He saw this day coming years ago. If he knows how many hairs are on my head, huh? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. All right, well, let's just bow our hearts and pray for the giver of this offering. Heavenly Father, we just bow our hearts right now, Lord, and we want to pray and ask a blessing on the giver, Lord. We want you to give them back a hundredfold, Father, because your word says being faithful, right? Obedience is better than sacrifice. And Father, this is our way of being obedient to you. We give a tithe, which is 10% to our body. And Father, we just want to praise you and thank you and ask that you bless those who give, Father, and bless those who are hurting. Father, we just want to lift everybody up because the word, the word of God says when one member suffers, we all suffer. And we don't want anybody suffering right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, church. Have a good day.
This is holy ground. You make it holy, God. We worship you, Jesus. As we wait, sing it with us. Come on. Here as we wait, seek your face. Come and make your throne upon our praise. Here in this place, have your way. The moment that we see you, we are changed. right now and you can declare it over yourself and over your household come on lift your voice with us here chains fall come on chains fall fear bow here now Jesus you change everything lives here Jesus, you change. Lift your voice and declare. Come on. Everything inside of you, lift your voice and sing it out. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Come on, do and surrender. We fall down. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Show us your glory, show us in one 
a shout of praise. We bless your name, God. You're worthy, 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 worthy. Amen, 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 amen. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit of heaven, right now we come before you and we ask, God, that you would fill us with your presence, that you would fill us with your power, that you would fill us with your peace. God, let every burning heart become holy ground right now. Chains, we command you to fall in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, burdens, we command you to go right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Redeemer. Hallelujah. We, we command pain right now to go in the name of Jesus. Pain in a right hip, I command you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Father, you're amazing. God, you're wonderful. We worship you, God, because of who you are. Thank you for what you've done for us. We love you so much. God, we ask right now that your peace would begin to flood each and every single mind under the sound of my voice. Right now, peace come. Peace from heaven come. Holy Spirit, peace come right now in the name of Jesus. Be still and know that he is God. Be still and know that he is God. He's the name above every other name. There's no other name by which we are saved other than the name of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for your salvation. God, we thank you for your deliverance. God, we thank you that you're our sustainer, that you're our provider. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. That you are our provider. God, in the name of Jesus. I command every worry to go right now in the name of Jesus. God, you're amazing and you're wonderful. Prepare our hearts, prepare our minds to receive from your word now. God, we love you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Come on, church. If you're excited to hear from God's word, let us know down below. Woo! Well, hey, everyone, we're excited to get into God's word. We just came out of a, a powerful time of worship, and I'm just believing today God's going to speak to each one in a, in a real way. And before we dive into God's word, though, you know me, I like to uh, tell a funny story. And so there was a pastor and he went out to visit uh, an elderly gentleman of his congregation and as they were there visiting, the pastor mentioned to the man that he said, you know, at your advanced age, you really should be thinking and, and planning about the hereafter. Well, the man replied, oh, pastor, you know, I do it all the time, no matter where I'm at. If I'm in the living room or if I go upstairs or if I'm in the kitchen or even out in the garage, I'm always asking myself, now, what am I here after? <laughs> yep. Thanks for the courtesy laugh. Well, we're going to go into God's word right now. And, uh, you know, I can't hear any amens from where you're at right now, but I can see them. So if there's something that's being said, man, shoot up the hearts or the thumbs up. So how many are ready to go into God's word? Let's see those hearts. All right. Here, there they are. Great. Well, you know what? All over the world, people love to celebrate. How many like to celebrate? Look at your neighbor and say, do you like to celebrate? Yep, we like to celebrate. In fact, we celebrate seasons of life, uh, like the announcement of having a baby. You know, we're getting ready to have our second grandson, and we had a big celebration at the gender reveal. We also like to celebrate birthdays. We celebrate graduations, we celebrate weddings, and there's even times of celebrating retirement. You see, we celebrate great accomplishments, like when our favorite team wins a championship. Now, I know for all you Detroit Lion fans like me, we're still waiting on that, but I'm hoping maybe next season, we'll see. But we like to celebrate important times of even when our military soldiers return home. And one popular way that we like to celebrate is to have a parade. We love parades. We love going to parades. We love being in parades. And our passage today on this Palm Sunday deals with a parade. In fact, it's a time of the triumphant entry of Jesus as the Messiah as he goes into the city of Jerusalem. And so today I've entitled this message, 
a Jesus parade. How many would like to go to a Jesus parade? Well, Mark chapter 11 is our passage, and we're going to start in verse number one, reading down to verse number 10. In the New Living Translation, it says this, as Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the towns of Bethage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. He said, go into that village over there, and as soon as you enter it, you, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. Verse number three says, if anyone asks what you're doing, just say the Lord needs it and he will return it soon. Verse four, the two disciples, they left. They found the colt standing in the street tied outside the front door. And as they were untying it, there were some bystanders. They demanded, what are you doing untying that colt? They said what Jesus had told them to say, and they were permitted then to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and they threw their garments over it and he sat on it. Now many in the crowd, they began to spread their garments out on the road ahead of them and others spread leafy branches and they were waving palms that they had cut from the fields. Verse nine, Jesus was, was in the center of the procession and all the people around him, they were shouting, praise God. Other translations say, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Verse 10, they're shouting blessings on the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Praise God. In other words, Hosanna in the highest heaven. You see, friends, there is so much that we can take away from this passage that we just don't have time for at all. And so I just want to break down a few thoughts as we go a little bit at a time. And I just want the Holy Spirit to just speak to us. And, uh, you know, I've, I've taken some things that I've studied from the past and also some things that I've, I've read recently from our district superintendent, Pastor Harris. And so just putting some thoughts together and let's just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us now uh, through this passage. And so we see in verse one again, as Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to these towns of Bethage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives. You see, Lori and I had the privilege of being able to travel in this area last Thanksgiving. It was about a 20 mile hike from where they were coming from to Jerusalem. And we see that this was Passover season, so it was a pretty happening place. For the Jews, it was an exciting time because uh, they're thinking that they're finally getting the conquering king that they've desired for so many years. But it wasn't so exciting for the Romans. You see, for both groups, the one thing at stake is power. You see, the people wanted power given to them to overthrow their rulers, even if that meant the religious leaders. You see, the religious leaders, they hated Jesus because he threatened their power. He began to speak and people started to believe in what he was saying. They became followers of him. In fact, his popularity was growing even more than theirs. And so they, they loved that power and they were starting to lose their power. And there were thousands of devout Christians from all over the world arrived here in this holy city for Passover. In fact, it's believed that the population in Jerusalem more than tripled in size. There was about 2 million people during the feast. And so it, was, it made it necessary for the Roman military to be on high alert. They were all over the place because they were watching out for any radical Jewish zealot who might try to kill a Roman official or someone that may want to start a riot. And so it's with less than a week before his crucifixion, Jesus is here arriving on the scene. And so the, the passage goes on and says, Jesus sent two of them. Now, the disciples, they're not mentioned by name, but he sent them on ahead and he said, go into that village over there. And as soon as you enter it, you're going to see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. Now, the question is, how did Jesus know that that was going to happen? You know, we're not really told. I'd like to think that he was uh, omniscient and he knew everything. 
And some people would argue that, well, maybe he made secret arrangements beforehand with his friends, Lazarus and Mary, uh, who had lived there in Bethany. And, uh, you know, some may say that even later in the week, he made special arrangements for the upper room without the disciples even knowing. But again, I believe he knew it supernaturally. I was thinking, even if he had made prior arrangements, the cult probably would have been brought to him and the bystanders, they probably wouldn't be asking, why is he taking this cult? Because they would know already. And so we see in verse three, if anyone asked, what are you doing? Just say, the Lord needs it and will return it soon. So what is known in this passage is his intention which was to be obedient to the word by fulfilling the prophecy given in Zechariah 9.9. The, the prophecy said this, it says, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. You see, what I find amazing about this portion and what we can be encouraged by is the fact that Jesus knows our future and he prepares us for it. It's called divine provision. The word provision, it's an interesting word. It literally means being able to see what is needed in the future and providing for it. Kind of like preparing for a trip. You know, uh, when we go on a trip, we like to find out what the weather's gonna be like. And so as I'm sitting there getting my suitcase ready, I'm making sure, okay, we're gonna be gone for seven days. Okay, I've got seven pairs of underwear. I got my socks, I, I got my jeans and my shirts. Do we need a jacket? And so just preparing for this trip. And, and so uh, that's what's going on here right now. It's divine provision. And so Jesus knew that these boys were going going to be questioned when they began to untie the colt. And we see that the colt was there with his mama. And so uh, it, Jesus shows here a powerful leadership trait that he considered the consequences of his actions. And so because of that, he prepared the disciples for the moment when they were questioned. Isn't that awesome? Friends, we can be encouraged that when God gives us an assignment or even places us in a certain situation, we can be confident knowing that God will prepare us for the moment, even if we don't know what the outcome's gonna be. Right now, we're in a situation with this virus. We don't know what the outcome's gonna be, but we know that God does, and he's preparing, and he's using, and he's providing for us. You see, these boys, these disciples, they were on a mission to find and get a donkey that was tied to a doorway outside in the street. They didn't even have an address. And then they were to remove it and then risk the chance of being arrested for theft. Isn't that crazy? Let me ask you this. Would you have went so willingly? You see, friends, when God tells us to do something, he will also prep us with what we need to know to be obedient to get it done. Verse four, it says the two disciples, then they left, they found the colt. In fact, Matthew 21, again, like I said, it said that you'll find a donkey tied with a, a colt with her standing in the street. And so it's tied outside the front door. And as they were untying it again, here we go. Some bystanders demanded, hey, what are you doing untying that colt? And they, they said, they told them what Jesus told them to say, and they were permitted to take it. You see, the disciples had no clue at that moment why Jesus wanted a colt. They simply had to trust him and they obeyed his instructions. You see, friends, there will always be those who don't understand what Jesus sends you to do. The bystanders here, they were wondering why these two strange guys uh, who don't even own an animal were, unt were untying it. How many would have questioned them? Man, I probably would have as well. You see, a practical life tip that we see from this part of this passage is that when others don't understand our obedience to Jesus, we should respond to their questions. You see, we, we don't need to get all huffy or irritated or even argumentative, friends. We shouldn't give people the cold shoulder or even the silent treatment, just hoping that they just be quiet and go away. But see, we're to... We're to answer questions with grace and also with truth. You see, honest questions deserve honest answers. 
The disciples, they responded truthfully and with good hearts. And the villagers, they accepted their answer because they knew how good Jesus had been to Mary and to Martha and Lazarus who lived in that city. You see, the bystanders, they trusted the word of the disciples because they trusted Jesus. Verse number seven, when they brought the colt to Jesus and they threw their garments over it and he sat on it. You see, it says here that this colt had never been ridden before, just as he showed his mastery over nature and calming the storms we see in the book of Mark. He's now demonstrating his authority by not only riding an unbroken colt, but riding it through a shouting crowd that's waving and throwing palm branches before him. Man, that's a, that's a major accomplishment. And it was also known to have an unridden uh, animal like that, a beast uh, of the field like that was significant of what something a king would do. And so Jesus is here making a statement. Verse number eight, many in the crowd, they spread their garments on the road at him and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Verse nine, Jesus was in the center of the procession and the people all around him were shouting, praise God. Another translation says, Hosanna, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Praise God in the highest heaven. You see, this is an incredible passage of hope. That word Hosanna literally means to save us, King, save us. You see, friends, if you only remember one thing from this message today, let it be that Jesus coming into the Jerusalem represents God's divine promise. You see, it's the promise of eternal life. It's a promise of salvation. It's the continuance of salvation in our lives. Why is this so important? Well, it's important because we are blasted at times with the, with the sin nature. I mean, how many understand that? That is why the Greek language is pretty descriptive of our salvation being a process. You see, we are in the process of being saved. We're saved when we first confess our sins and accept Jesus into our hearts. But we are also being saved each day as we live. You see, Jesus promises to give us life, and that is an abundant life, a life full in Jesus. Like what's found in John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You see, Jesus came riding humbly into Jerusalem that day, following the providence of God and he became the provision of salvation for our lives. And he is becoming the promise of God as our Messiah, as our Christ, as Savior, and our King. And so as cool as it would have been to be there among those welcoming Jesus, you know, we can welcome him into our hearts today. We can shout Hosanna, God save us. We can lift our voice to call him blessed. You see, we have so much more now living on this side of the cross where we can praise him for than that crowd did that day. You see, Christ's triumph is victory of love over hatred, truth over lies, and life over death. You see, friend, he still comes into our lives and he wants to come into your life today. You see, as I was just praying and getting ready uh, to share this message with you. It's like, Lord, what else? Is there anything specific that you want me to say? And one of the thoughts that came to my mind is this, that there are people right now watching that can identify with the crowd. You see, there was many people in that crowd and they were there and they were shouting. They didn't understand what they were shouting. They were just experiencing the hype of the triumphant entry. And there's a lot of people that come to the church services that kind of just stand around, they're part of the crowd, but all they're doing is experiencing the hype. And I believe today that Jesus wants you to experience the hope of him. Going from hype to hope. Man, going from the outside of the crowd, just kind of, 
yeah, this is great, cool, yeah, to really understanding what these, the ones that were proclaiming, Hosanna, King Jesus, save us, you know, and I believe right now that this could be your opportunity to experience the hope of Jesus, not just the hype of knowing Jesus. And maybe you haven't welcomed Jesus into your life. I just want to give you an opportunity right now to do that. All you have to do is just to believe in your heart that Jesus is the Christ and confess with your mouth, like we read from Romans 10.10, 10, it says, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and you're saved. Are you ready to make that, that decision right now? If you are, just repeat that prayer with me today. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I just come to you as I am. I ask that you forgive me. I receive you now as my Lord and as my Savior. I believe that you paid that penalty for my, the payment of my sin when you died on that cross. And I receive you now as my Savior. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for another chance. Thank you for a new start on this Palm Sunday. And Lord, I also want to take an opportunity just to pray for those. Maybe you're listening right now and, and maybe even uh, during this time of kind of isolation that we've been in, maybe there's just, you felt maybe a little distant from God. And, and this is an opportunity where you can just experience the hope of Jesus again. And, uh, and so, Lord, I just pray for each one that's hearing me today. God, that you would release fresh hope inside this room that they're watching. God, let the excitement of you being the triumphant king come alive in their spirits. We're even right now, Holy Spirit, have an encounter with them. We pray that even you would just baptize them in your power, in your joy, in the revelation, knowing that you are real, that you are the one true God, and that you love each one so much, and you just desire relationship with them. Come now, Holy Spirit, in that room, and bring peace to those that are right now, maybe even contemplating ending their life right now with everything that's going on around them. They're maybe even asking, what's the use? Maybe the enemy's been speaking lies. I come against the lies of the enemy now in Jesus' name. And I say, Jesus, release that hope, that joy, that peace that they're looking for. God, begin to speak to them the purpose of their life right now. God, reveal to them the powerful truth that you are the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through you, Jesus. And we just give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Are you glad that you were here today? And we're praying for you. I just want to, again, let you know, Lori and I, we love you. We believe in you. And uh, we're, we're praying for each one each day. And uh, we're, let's continue just to be praying. You know, we talked a little bit in the announcements about the Unite 714. Let's really just be praying uh, each day uh, that, that there will be a cure to this virus soon, that God will bring healing to those that uh, are sick and uh, that God will continue to give wisdom and, and, and peace and direction to our president and all the leaders. And uh, I'm just looking forward to spending a Sunday with you all again here very soon. And so for the blessing right now is important, you know, from Numbers chapter six, where Moses spoke a blessing and put in the name of God on the people. And so right now, church, may the Lord bless you. 
May he keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you, knowing that you are, again, sons and daughters of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So right now, walk in his power, walk in his truth, and let's just continue to hold on to the hope of Jesus that he is our victorious King. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, I'm Pastor Robert Morris, and we're facing a global crisis right now in a pandemic called COVID-19. But we know, according to 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, that if we pray, God will hear from heaven, will forgive our sin, and will heal our land. I am so grateful to be a part of a coalition of pastors, leaders, and churches around the globe where we are joining together to pray. It's called Unite 714. Churches are praying every weekend and we're asking individuals to pray every morning and every evening at 714. And I'm asking you to join us as a church and as an individual. If you'll go to unite714.com, you'll find out all the information, unite714.com. We know that God is gonna hear from heaven and heal our land. Let's pray.